So in this problem, we're given a function, the natural log of 1 minus x squared, and this can be represented as a power series. What we'd like to do in this problem is find the first five coefficients of that power series, and also find the radius convergence of this power series. So there are multiple ways to do this problem with varying degrees of information about series. If you know what a Taylor series or a Maclaurin series is, you could certainly go through a lengthy calculation to find the power series that we're looking for here. The easiest way to do this problem would be to look up a similar power series in a table of power series and compare this function that we're given to one of those. What I'm going to do is kind of take the middle ground and remind you about the geometric series. The geometric series looks like this. It starts with a value a. Then to get the second term in the series, you multiply that by r. And then to get each term in the series, after that, you multiply each term by another r. Now we know that this adds up to a over 1 minus r, as long as the absolute value of r is less than 1. There is a relatively simple proof for this that you can look up somewhere else. What I want to do is take this series and plug in a equals 1 and r equals x. We end up getting the sum of 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on. And this whole thing adds up to 1 over 1 minus x as long as the absolute value of x is less than 1. That is a well-known power series that you could also look up in a table. Let's find one more of these power series that you can look up in a table. And let's do that by taking both sides of this equation, this infinite series being the left side and this sum being the right side, and let's integrate each side. If we integrate this series term by term, what we get looks something like like this. And if we integrate this function 1 over 1 minus x, what we end up getting is the negative natural log of 1 minus x. The negative comes from a u substitution when you do this integral. Let's move that negative to the other side. Now this bottom line that we have here is yet another power series that we could look up because it is a common power series that you will find in some textbooks. Now I think we're at a point where many of us are on the same page. Whether you've looked up this power series or whether you've derived it using what I just showed you, uh, most of us doing this problem in a power series section of a calculus book will get to this point. Now we have a power series for natural log of 1 minus x, but what we really want is a power series for the natural log of 1 minus x squared. So what we're going to do is we're just going to replace x with an x squared, and that is going to give us what we want. Doing a little bit of simplification, we now have the power series that we're looking for. But okay, to answer the question, what we should probably do is inspect this power series, this general power series that we're given up here. If we write out the first couple of terms, we notice that C0 represents the constant in this power series. C1 represents the coefficient on x. C2 represents the coefficient on x squared, and so on. So if we're going to compare this general power series to what we just got for this given function, what you'll notice is that our result has no constant. So C0 is 0. Our result also has no linear term. It has no x term, so C1 is going to be 0 as well. Our x squared term has a negative 1 on it, so C2 is going to be negative 1. We don't have an x cubed term, so C3 is going to be 0 as well. And our x to the fourth term has a negative 1 half on it, so C4 is going to be negative 1 half. Now that answers the first question. We have found the first five coefficients of this power series. The second part of the question can be answered if we look at the interval of convergence of this original geometric series. For this series to converge, we required that the absolute value of r was going to be less than 1. When we replaced r with x, we required that the absolute value of our x value would be less than 1. And when we did our integration trick, we actually still needed to require that the absolute value of of x is less than 1 for this series to converge. Now, the interval of convergence doesn't change when we integrate or differentiate. When we replaced all of our x's with x squares, we needed to do that right here as well. So technically our requirement for convergence would be that the absolute value of x squared is less than 1. While requiring that the absolute value of x squared is less than 1 is really the same thing as requiring that x has to be less than 1. Therefore, our interval of convergence just goes from negative 1 to 1. And since I'm out of room here, I will just write that the radius of convergence is 1. The radius of convergence is half of the length of the interval of convergence. Since our interval goes from negative 1 to positive 1, its length is 2, and half of that is our radius, which is 1. Okay, so I tried to squeeze that whole thing onto one page. Hopefully it worked out for you. I hope that this helps you out, and I will see you in the next video.